Jira service management can be very confusing to new users, especially if you don't understand how it's organized. So here, we're going to jump in and talk about how Jira is organized to help ensure that when you go in, you know where to find things. Let's get started. At the highest level, Jira Service Management has an instance, a copy of Jira Service Management that your organization uses. Every instance of Jira Service Management is different from every other instance. This means that the work items or issues in one instance won't show up in others, but also that the configurations and features and settings are unique to each instance. It also means that if you don't have access to that instance with some kind of license, you can't get into it. Now, this confused me for a while because I would move between companies and I didn't realize that the instances were different. This meant that the configurations or the look and feel was different. And that made it a little bit hard because I didn't know why and I didn't know how to ask questions about it. The other thing that an instance does is ensures access is controlled. For example, in my organization, I might have access as an agent, someone who works on tickets. And this lets me go in and work on those tickets. However, I probably don't have access to Atlassian's version of Jira Service Management, so I just can't log in. I won't see anything at all. It is possible for an organization to have multiple instances. This might be done for security. Maybe the legal department has its own version, its own instance of Jira Service Management, because they do really sensitive things that no one else should see. Typically, though, an organization will have one instance and everything will be in there. Within every instance is a number of projects. Projects are just a way to group related work items or issues and configurations. Typically, an organization will choose to break out projects by team or department or type of work. For example, the marketing team might have its own project, and that has settings and configurations that help them do their job. Whereas the engineering team may have an entirely separate project that is more tuned to what they need, collecting bugs or tracking incidents. Some projects will have the same settings. For example, you might have multiple support teams that all share configurations. However, they all support different teams, so they have different projects, and that allows them to keep things separate, to do different reporting, but also to control access. Just like you have to have permission to be in an instance, you have to have permission to be in a particular project. And depending on how your organization set things up, this might be very broad access, everyone can see every project, or very narrow access, you can only see a few projects you happen to work on. This also confused me quite a bit, because the person next to me would see some tickets and I wouldn't, or I would see tickets and they wouldn't, and I just didn't know that I didn't have access to that project. This is also a very common challenge where people are frustrated. When in doubt, you can always reach out to your information technology or IT team asking for help, or talk to your team. Someone on your team may have the ability to manage a project. This person is called a project administrator or project admin. Typically, there's someone with a bit more knowledge, but they can control some of the configuration and setup necessary to allow you into that project, explain how it works, and even change some things to make it work better for you. One thing to keep in mind though, is that project admin might not be able to change everything in a project. And this is where it can be very confusing and frustrating because you might have to reach out to a Jira administrator, someone with additional permissions who can make those changes. So if you find yourself unable to make a change in a project, it's usually best to reach out for help. Typically, IT is this individual or has this person on their team, but you might have to figure out who your Jira admin is and have them modify your project to change how it works. Now, within a project, there will be a number of work items. This is essentially something you'll need to do. You might have to create a marketing plan, or maybe you have to respond to a bug, or install a new server. Regardless, when you open the work item, there'll be a number of fields containing different information. This information might tell you something about the system, who owns it, might tell you something about the work item, when it's due, etc. But this is the main thing you'll be interacting with in Jira. The work item is what I tend to open up and what I'm using. Work items are typically open within the project, so if you have access to the project, you should see most of the work items in there. 
It is possible, however, for work items to have their own additional security. For example, in your marketing project, there might be super sensitive marketing plans that have additional security so only a few people can see them. Again, this is another area of frustration because why can Sally see something but I can't? So if you find that there's a work item you just can't access, you might have to go chat with your manager or someone else on your team to figure out what could be going on. So that at a very high level is how Jira service management is organized. The instance is your copy of Jira, Within it, you'll have projects that contain configurations and work items, and the work items are the things you'll actually be using on a day-to-day -day basis to do your job. I really hope that you found this useful. When I first started using Jira, I didn't have any of this explained to me, and if I had understood these terms and this structure, it would have been much easier for me to reach out and ask for help, or even understand what I was being expected to do. I'm curious though, what challenges you face using Jira? Please drop down a comment and I'll be happy to respond. Also, if you found this useful, I'd appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. That lets me know that this is something valuable and that I should keep making more of it. And if you have other ideas on topics that you find confusing or challenging, drop it down in the comments and I'll be happy to take a look. Thank you so much for learning a little bit about how Jira service management is set up. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one of these again soon. Me again, thank you so much for watching that video. Check out more here and pop down into the description. I've got a blog with weekly content, I also have a lot of online learning on Atlassian stuff and project management. And if you need personalized training for you and your team, reach out and let me know. I'll be happy to get something set up for you. Thanks again for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again soon.